Broadcasting worldwide on iHeartRadio and on your radio dial, it's Booja with Lee Hart and Jason Hoyt. G'day Kiwis, it's Monday the 26th of September 2016, what? so very nice to have your company. It's Monday afternoon, I'll be totally honest with you, I can't really be asked. I've had a hell of a weekend, the kids were screaming all weekend, I had no money, we had massive cabin fever. I find myself coming into work this afternoon, it's Monday, it's the beginning of the working week. Yeah. I'm looking at that big hill of the, the working week, Lee Hart, and uh, I, I hear you, I, I, you know what I'm saying, mate? I, but I, I, yes, feel like, yes. I feel like we can get through this. I think if we just keep talking fast, get some energy going, we'll get back into the show in no time at all and it'll just be like last week's show. Yeah, I, I agree, mate. G'day, mate. Hey, well, I've just told you all about my weekend. How was your weekend? I uh, didn't do much at all, be honest. Yeah. It's nice to have your company, Kiwis. And it's now time for the Daily Booja Big Show Admin. Yeah, I might kick this one off if I can because there's a lot on my go to the moment. and um, A lot on your what? Well, a lot of my mind at the moment is a figure of speech. Oh, right, OK. Um, can I just say, oh, we've got a guest coming in. Great. Um, Alan, someone, somebody with local politics. Um, okay. Restoring, it sounds pretty tedious, I know, so we'll be as brief as we can and see if we can't just knock through it. Sorry, what was his name again? I'm not quite sure, to be honest, Chase, but... Um, well, just, is it, he's in next, isn't he? Yeah, very shortly. Okay, well, it'd be good because I've got to do the intro for him, so it'd be good to know who, he, what his name is. Yep, let's see what I can do. On a more pressing note, yep. um, this involves you, Matt, cheese. Um, has that guy one, got the cheese down in Rotor- and down Rotorua yet, the prize pack? Yeah, there's a bit of a snag to start off with. I, I stopped the guy just before he jumped on the motorway, but he was actually heading north, so it ended up in Hibiscus Coast, but it is on its way back down now. It's near uh, Pocono. Pocono? Yeah, it's on its, on its way. Well, can I just be clear on this? If we're going to be sending cheese around the country, we need to maybe have tracking codes on this so we know where it is. Someone rings me up or texts and says, where's my cheese? I'd like to be able to give them some sort of information, if you know what I mean. Tracking, yeah. tracking code on the cheese. Yeah, tracking code, that, that kind of thing. That, so if you want to look at that. You know, we've got a bit of grief about sending cheese, so it would be good to know where that is. I'm really starting to wonder whether it's a good idea to be sending cheese around the country as prize packs at all. I don't know how it started, well, whose think, idea it was. I think the situation was basically we didn't have any other prizes, but we did have that cheese in the fridge, so we decided that that could be a prize. And that's where it all started It's kind of a spontaneous from. thing. It got out of hand. Yeah. One, next thing you know, we're, yeah, okay. It, exactly, exactly. Yeah, a bit like Hitler, wasn't it, when he invited, and invaded Russia? You know, yeah. sound like a good idea. Kicked off with it. Bang. Whole thing turned to custard. Mm. Know what I mean? But you make some good points, though, with regards to cheese stings. Very uh, quickly. Yep. Yeah, we've got some new stings. Do we do we play them now? Or yeah, let's see. Very quickly. Top three. When we're actually... Get, okay, right. From our for our rave collection, and uh, that might be a good one. When Alan's getting boring in this next interview, we can just whack that on. Yeah, whenever there's a pause with him, just whack that whack into it. And there's. <laughs> be a nice one to bring them on. Great energy. Great energy, Matt. And there's also the Ponsonby cocaine sting, but that was a different thing altogether, I think. Right, OK. That's fine. We'll park that one for now. That's all from me on Big Show Admin. Anyone yeah, pretty much. Uh, did you have sex in the offices, Matt, on Saturday? Re- uh, morning or afternoon? Afternoon. Yes. Well, okay. no, it was just by myself, to be fair. So does that count? Yes. That's fine, Matt. <laughs> Ricky. Frank's food at hand there. You're listening to Daily Boucher with Lee Hart and Jason Hoyt. And we're talking local politics now, and it's our very special pleasure to introduce a very special guest, uh, Mr. Alan Matson. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to Boucher, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Just hold that thought, Jason. We need to pay the bills. Um, here's a wee infomercial. Boy, that takes me back. Do you have an itchy or irritated bowel? Maybe you've got hemorrhoids that are just too far up to reach. Now, there's a practical solution. Using a combination of NASA and barbecue brush technology, experts have now developed the new rectal brush. This flexible wire brush channels warm water to those hard to reach problem areas, giving you relief when and where you need it most. The new rectal brush is 25% more flexible than previous models, allowing it to follow your body's unique inner contours. But for the more faint-hearted, you can start your cleansing program with the soft, less abrasive mop attachment. Like the rectal brush, the anal mop soothes an irritated bowel, and it's also ideal for cleaning those fragile wine glasses. But wait, there's more. 
Thanks to NASA, the rectal brush now comes with this extendable utility attachment, which also makes it ideal for cleaning block spouting gutters and downpipes around the home. So, get your life and your freedom back with the new rectal brush. Whoa, welcome back. Um, fantastic infomercial there, Jace. I'm surprised. So you can actually use that on the spoutings as well. What a great invention. Multi, multi-purpose, the old rectal brush, that's for sure. Thank you. Now, Alan, local body politics. Um, why should we give a shit? Well, it sounds dull, but it actually affects probably life, you know, more than some of that central body politics. You did right there. Yep. The look of our streets, you know, whether the restaurants and bars are, can open, whether the footpaths are, you know... It's interesting that you uh, mentioned the streets, Alan, because at the moment around my property, I want to talk booms. Yeah, my, you know, around the edge of my property, they're never mowed. No, they're probably waiting for you to grow some vegetables or fruit. Right, OK. Now, you kind of have a... Uh, what's the word in English? A strong interest in, in heritage, heritage buildings. Yes, I do, um, because I think that's, you know, it's what our grandfathers and great-grandfathers, that some of those buildings still survive, and, and hopefully this city is recognisable. When they're going to squeeze all this extra million into Auckland, they're going to put it in place of lovely views and lovely heritage buildings. I'll, I'll tell you what's really getting on my goat, um, Alan, is these bloody fat kids. Big issue. Well, I don't think the council will uh, actually have the uh, commitment to get involved in well, trying I don't to think put they could. I don't, think, I don't see how they couldn't get involved, but it's a huge problem. Well, it is. I think perhaps uh, diversity of food outlets would be a good thing. There you Booter. go. Huge. <laughs> well, hold that thought. we we'll back shortly to discuss this more in a big monorail system, which I know that you're a big fan of. Are you? Yes, I am. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Oasis. Key. Oasis there. Oasis, right there. Oh, no, you go. No, you go. You can go, go, go. Oasis there. On. On Haraki. Nice, mate, nice. We're talking local politics uh, with special guest Alan Matson. Alan, I might bring myself in here, Jason, if I could. You do. When are the local politicians going to take us seriously as adults? I mean, just the other day, I was in a bar downtown. You know, we're sitting outside, we get ushered in, we're not allowed to sit out on the street anymore, they're, you know, they're not treating us like adults, they wouldn't let us have, after a certain time, drinking, you know, on the street, we had to go in, admittedly I had no pants on at the time, and, you know, because that was kicked off from something happened in the afternoon. But when are they going to start respecting us a a as adults? Well, I guess the super city thought they were going to be like Big Daddy, and they sort of take a big blunt hammer and treat everybody the same way. I think they need to go and deal with the problems where they are, perhaps like Fort Street, and, and uh, treat adults like adults if they want to have a world-class city. 30 words or less would have been better, Alan, but thank you. Alan, thanks for coming on, and don't be a stranger. Come on back and let us know how it's going in the next few weeks. Good o. Bit of an update on this, Voting, eh? Voting, you've got to get your votes into the mail by 5th of October or down to a voting box by 8th of October, and there's one in Britomart Square. And if you don't vote, as they say, you can't complain. That's right, and if you see the name Alan Matson on a form, bloody ticket. Why to matter local board? There I'm on a ticket. Thanks, mate. Damon Parler, Daily Boozer. How wicky. Alison Chains here, Radio Hodaki. Lee Hart and Jason Hoyt, and now it's time for Fish Chat. Um. Many fish bite if you've got. How come we're doing Fish Chat today? Isn't that normally a Tuesday thing? Well, didn't you want to do Fish Chat today? I thought you'd make. Uh, Made that call. It's daylight savings things really throw yeah, well, me. Well, it's totally thrown me out. Well, totally, you've started it now. You totally talked over the guy as well. Well, that's, that's, that's right. not a bad thing. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. Uh, fish pie, Lee Hart. Eggs in it? No, no eggs in the fish uh, pie. Matt, a fish pie, eggs in it? Yes. Might take it back to the actual fishing itself. Oh, you, know, do, you need do. fish before you can make a fish pie, of course. And yep. I was out fishing on the weekend. Whereabouts? Just past the heads. Pa Whereabouts, sorry? Oh, it's that Mangawai there. Went out through the heads. Oh, yeah. And they, um, in, in the skiff. And uh, doing a bit of um, long baiting, long lining. In the skiff? Off the skiff, yeah. Oh, off the skiff, yeah. And uh, I got a bit lucky, actually. Got a few roughies, orange roughies, pulled them in. Fighters, like puffer fish. Puff. 
Puffer fish. Some puffers. Oh, of they're nasty. How many of those did you get? About four. They kind of yeah. hunt in packs, you see. They, I, you know, if you're going to get one, you'll tend to get more than, you know, more than the one. I know exactly what you mean, mate. I was canoeing and uh, longlining by Rangi Toto. And, jeez, uh, puffer fish. <laughs> so many puffer fish around Rangi Toto. <laughs> yeah, think about around there, especially in the shallow depths. <laughs> are you talking about Rangi Toto or are you talking about the Mangawai heads? Well, anyway, really. Yeah. But I've um, also got a few better kinna. Oh, did you do a bit of a dive, did you? No. Nah. <laughs> right. Do you like the kinna? Just you hooked him. Oh, you hooked him. Hook. <laughs> <laughs> hooked him off the bottom. But you'd you have to say most of the stuff I was catching was kind of chowder fish. You know, you'd oh, put yeah. So, you know, I know what you're like. Once I've caught a couple of things that would go in a chowder. Yeah, like here. Yeah. Like your roughy, maybe your puffer. You tend to start hunting. You don't eat the puffers, do you? Oh, not the skins. I tend to start fishing for the other stuff that might go in a chowder then. Oh, yeah. You know, because you've already got a half a chowder there, so I'm, I'm going to go for your squid. Your kinna. Your kinna. So I've never, I mean, it's interesting that you've. Mussels. You've, you, you go fishing for kinna, of course. Usually you dive for those. But you would normally. I wouldn't have a kinna in a chowder. Wouldn't you? No. What, what's your perfect chowder then? Oh, uh, fish. Um, mussels, shrimp. Uh, I, I like a sort of chowdery laksa, but more like a gumbo. Like yeah, well, like, yeah, a bit of a gumbo, gumbo, a bit of spice about it, you know. But I'd also like it to be creamy too. Matt, you were about to say something then, weren't you? Were you no, just no, no. Oh, okay, all, no, all free. Free. feel free to. This is all <laughs> if you want to partake in fish chat, there's no problems there, mate. Alricky. And so we come to the end of another Daily Bouchard show, Lee Hart. And uh, it's been a hell of a show, my friend. A hell of a show. Certainly has been, Jace. What a show it has been. A huge show. Highlights for you? Well, I think at about 5.37, uh, and I think we peaked at about 10 to 6. Actually, yep. that was my sort of gut feeling. I thought we got off to a strong start. We dropped a bit at about 4.30, 4.32, but picked it up again just before 5. Yeah, it had that feel to it. I, I'll give you that. But yeah. I think, as you say, we've got momentum back. That's the main thing. And that momentum we can carry through the next show, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Huge show, of course. Buzz Aldrin coming in, having a chat about space and all that kind of stuff he's involved with. Looking forward to it, mate. Hey, it's been great having your company this evening, New Zealand. Take care of each other. In the meantime, it's Booja to you. Booja, the radio show. Booja! How Ricky.